Dr. Fizz, Chapter L, The Klein-Gordon Equation, In Search of a Relativistic Quantum Mechanical Equation for the Electron. The Klein-Gordon Equation was proposed by Klein and Gordon in 1927, but it did not work. This was on the eve of Dirac's discovery in 1928, where the correct equation was found to get the relativistic quantum mechanical description of the electron. So here, um, I want to give credit to Sch uh, Schrodinger. Schrodinger did work with this equation in his attempt first to arrive at the solution of the hydrogen atom, but when he found it gave the wrong spectrum, he abandoned it and it reverted to a classical argument in terms of the energy. So we're looking for a relativistic quantum mechanical description of the electron up in here, which Dirac will give us. And it won't be the final story though, but it will be a start because quantum field theory then builds on that and work is still going on in this area. Well, we look at Einstein's uh, nice little triangle here to remember the equation uh, from relativity for energy. And looking at what we did with the Schrodinger equation here in one dimension, two dimensions, and three dimensions, eventually we gave this nice little reminder or review of how to get to the Schrodinger equation by replacing the energy with an operator and the momentum vector with an operator and writing down the kinetic and potential energy from the point of view of classical physics. So the classical energy is P squared over 2n plus V and these you start out multiplying them by a wave function and then promoting these to operators that operate on the wave function. So then the E operator gives you the IH bar ddt on the wave function on the right hand side, that's the right hand side of the Schrodinger equation, and the p uh, here operator, which by the way can be looked at on here as a plus sign if you have h bar over i instead of the minus i h bar, then when you take that del operator and this square means del dot del, which will give you the Laplacian, and the h bar over i squared gives you minus h bar squared and the 2m here is in the denominator. That is the Schrodinger equation. Can we play this game here with the relativistic energy? Sure, but we'll get something that doesn't apply to the electron, but still worth doing. Uh, here we have the relativistic energy equation. Here we have the classical energy embedded in here, p squared over 2m, kinetic, classical kinetic plus potential. And we're going to let the potential energy be zero. There's enough richness here in the physics by doing that. So let the V be zero and replace classical e equals B square over 2M with the relativistic. So we do that and here's our energy operator. We apply the energy operator twice to E squared. So it's IH bar DDT again, same thing. M squared C to the fourth, we just write down. And remember these are operators operating on the wave function psi. This operator here is very easy, just multiply, this constant multiplies it. And then p squared c squared, well the p is h bar over i del, p squared means h bar over i, that's squared, and then del dot del, which is Laplacian. So the c squared then hangs around here, the constants show up here in the middle, and this uh, two uh, operators are acting together here, one after the other, it gives you a minus h bar squared second to respect to time. Constants still come down here. This is minus h bar squared, Laplacian, and c squared. We divide both sides by h bar squared c squared to clean up the right hand side, so we have minus the Laplacian. Then the middle term will simply be m squared c squared, since c squared will divide into c4, dropping it down to c squared, and the h bar squared in the denominator. On the left hand side, the h bar squared will cancel, and you'll have minus 1 over c squared. So when you do that, you then get this nice equation here, where we bring the Laplacian over to the left hand side, and I like many aspects of this equation. There's a lot of rich physics here. One, you see C's and H bars. C's come from special relativity and H bars come from quantum mechanics, non-relativistic quantum mechanics. So by making a marriage of quantum mechanics with relativity, you see C's and H bars in the resulting differential equation. I also like this idea of X squared minus C squared D squared appearing uh, here you have a minus sign, you have space, and you have time, and you have the minus sign. Notice the c squared is with the d, 
t square here just and think of this as sort of a delta you know t there and this is the space so the corresponding ones with space partial derivative you know second derivative with respect to x squared so you can see this structure being reflected in here and that's characteristic of a relativistic equation sometimes one says the equation is covariant see this is covariant and that means it doesn't change under Lorentz transformation and another neat thing about this equation is if the rest mass should be zero then you get the wave equation a scalar wave equation now we have looked at the wave equation for light where this is a vector because light uh, light uh, has polarization uh, it's a vector equation but this is the corresponding scalar equation a spin zero particle is what this describes uh, Weisskopf and Pauli show this describes a a spin zero particle with mass m and if that mass should be zero you then get what is similar to the equation wave equation uh, for for light although in light we have a vector equation I mean a vector here because light has in you know, polarization spin one particle so that's another uh, neat thing to observe that is your Klein Gordon equation and remember here when the Laplacian generalized uh, second derivatives in space you know, add up x, y, and z, second derivatives. Well, here we're dealing with a four-dimensional universe, so we should include time. It has some super operator here called the DL inversion, which brings in the time with the relative minus sign, uh, characteristic of relativity, and the c squared with the t squared. This uh, box sometimes has a, has a squared up there like this, uh, but I'm going to use just the uh, notation without the square. So that four dimensional operator if you look at what we have from the previous page we have minus this working on the left hand side on the wave function so if you bring it to the right hand side we have the DL inversion plus the constants and that works on the wave function it gives zero really a very cute equation here this is your four dimensional sort of operator involving X Y Z and T and look at this 1 C 1 h bar and 1 m and all squared so the rest mass of the particle the speed of light from relativity and h bar from quantum mechanics you can bring in potential energy the potential in these ways we're not going to do this this in our course but if you have taken electromagnetic theory you know there is a scalar potential and a vector potential in general and since we have a four-dimensional theory here that it's would be understandable that you'd have four components for your potential uh, here so you have a scalar potential and a vector potential but we're not going to do this there's enough richness here we've done really a lot of nice physics in getting the Klein-Gordon equation the free Klein-Gordon equation where there's no potential energy